starts right now. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington. Coming up, what a senior U.S. official tells ABC News about the deal between Moscow and the leader of that Russian mercenary group behind the heavily armed uprising against the Kremlin. That story ahead. And looking out there with live cam, we could say it's tolerable right now at 79 degrees, but looking ahead again to triple digits. And good morning to you. It is Tuesday, June 27th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good Monday. And again, we hope you stay cool. Did you get outside much yesterday? Nope, on purpose. On purpose. Part of my game plan. My hibernation plan is now in full in effect. I, and I think that might work at this time of year. <laughs> yeah, and uh, my son came home yesterday. And he's like, Dad, just yuck. It's uh, I know. unbearable out there right now. We, you know, the little break we're getting, at least the humidity drops slightly in the afternoon. So we're not seeing those heat index readings. But even I had to run a story yesterday and just walking out the door to the park Parking lot was like, oh my, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. a mad dash for the AC, isn't it? Oh, uh, 104 yesterday. We're going to be up there again today. Records 105, so close to that. Now, we do have a little bit of encouraging news as we go down the road. First of all, got some uh, clear skies right now. We'll see a few morning clouds developing. 80 in town, 81 Castroville, same thing up there in Canyon Lake, kind of the same old song and dance as yesterday. We've got mid 70s for dew point temperatures, a little higher there, Stinson uh, Pleasanton at 75. So yeah, you notice the humidity when you step outside. Heat index right now, 85 at the airport, and it feels like 87 at Canyon Lake. The area of high pressure, which is becoming a very, very unwelcome guest, is sitting. You can see the spin right here in the center of that. The hub of the wheel is about right smack dab on top of us. And that's just, I mean, right in the middle of things. That's why we were at 104 yesterday, 104 again today. Like I said, this is going to slowly work its way to the east over the course of time. So that's going to be a little bit of relief, some subtle changes coming in here, but we got to wait a few days because first of all, like I said, today, 104, mm, going to feel like 107, 108 in there. And that's why we still have heat advisories, excessive heat warnings posted. Now, even though nothing is posted for portions of the Hill Country, obviously it's still going to be just brutally hot everywhere, just not reaching that actual numerical criteria for the, the advisory to be posted. Mold, pigweed are both on the low side, and over the next seven days, like I said, we see a little bit of relief. I'm going to block this right now. Will there be triple digits going into next week for the first couple of days of July? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. All right, thank you, Mike. A six-year-old murder case is getting a do-over after a mistrial. Guadalupe Contreras is accused of killing his wife, Elizabeth, back in 2017. Contreras had been on trial for almost a week until yesterday when the judge declared a mistrial after San Antonio police turned in evidence related to the case over the weekend. Now, the defense argued it needed time to look over that evidence, so the judge declared a mistrial. There is no timetable for when the new trial could take place. A Southside man is facing a murder charge after police say he shot his roommate. Police arrested Armando Regalado after investigators say he shot and killed the man he lived with after the two got into an argument. Police say Regalado lived in a smaller house on the same property as the victim on West Ansley Boulevard. The man who had been shot has, uh, and died has not been identified. Regalado was held on a $150,000 bail. A Texas resident is being treated for malaria after catching the potentially deadly disease. It is one of three cases in the country that was caught without the patient traveling elsewhere. The Texas Department of State Health Services says the person likely contracted it while working outside in Cameron County in South Texas. DSHS wants to remind public to protect yourself from mosquito bites with insect repellent, wearing long sleeves and pants when working outside, and draining standing water to limit mosquito breeding. Well, new details are emerging this morning after the mutiny against Russian military leaders. We are learning more about that deal brokered between the Kremlin that prompted the head of a mercenary group and his troops to retreat. ABC's Justin Finch has more from Washington. This morning, new details about the apparent deal between Moscow and Yevgeny Prigozhin, leader of the Wagner mercenary group that nearly revolted against the Kremlin. A senior U.S. official tells ABC News Fergosian stopped his troops Saturday and took a deal to go into exile in Belarus after it became clear that Russian defense leaders were going to align with Vladimir Putin.
The official also says Fergosian and his troops got closer to Moscow than previously reported, about 100 miles from the Russian capital, making much faster progress than they imagined, shooting helicopters and a fighter jet along the way. An enraged Russian President Vladimir Putin claiming the armed rebellion would have been suppressed in any case and condemning the organizers for betraying Russia, though never mentioning Prigozhin by name. Prigozhin also broke his silence from an unknown location. Saying in an audio recording that his goal was to protest Moscow's attempt to dissolve his forces into the Russian army, not take down Putin. The senior U.S. official who spoke to ABC News believes Fergosian will head to Belarus, but will not likely stay there, adding that, quote, his long-term survivability is hard to calculate. Former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine Bill Taylor says that Prigozhin's actions undermine Putin's strength. I think the big picture is the weakness of Russia, uh, both at the top and even on the lines, uh, and the strength and the strength of the Ukrainians, uh, as well as the preparation of the Ukrainians for this counteroffensive, which has been building for months, um, comes at a great time for the Ukrainians. We could get more details about Putin's deal with Prigozhin today when the president of Belarus, a key Putin ally, is expected to speak to reporters. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. State of Texas plans to pay a company hundreds of thousands of dollars in an effort to block migrant crossings along the Rio Grande. According to a copy of the contract, Cochrane USA was awarded a base contract of $850,000 to deploy floating border barriers in the river. Governor Greg Abbott says the first thousand feet of it will be placed near Eagle Pass. Records state that Texas is scheduled to deploy the barriers early next month. But according to the International Boundary and Water Commission, the governor has not obtained permits to deploy the buoys from the commission. Scorching temperatures have taxed the Texas power grid and threatened to bring record highs to the state before they are expected to expand to other parts of the U.S. The National Weather Service says that a heat dome is expected to reach north to Kansas City and east to Florida Panhandle and continue at least until the July 4th holiday. Texas State climatologist John Nielsen Gammon said the dome is not unusual because this is the time of year that the atmospheric conditions combine to create such a threat. The man who played a pivotal role in developing the lithium-ion battery has died. The University of Texas announced the death of John Goodnow in a statement. They said the world-renowned engineer died Sunday but did not share cause of death. He served as a university faculty member for 37 years, but he's most known for developing uh, lithium-ion batteries. His crucial discovery and development of materials back in the 1980s allowed for a more stable and powerful rechargeable battery. He, along with two other scientists, was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2019 for his work. It made him the oldest Nobel Prize winner at the age of 97. John Goodnow was 100 years old. Right now, 438, 79 degrees. A teenager is shot after mistakenly going to the wrong home to pick up siblings. Up next, how he's recovering two months later. Checking Transkite, it's awfully early out there right now. We don't expect much in the way of traffic, but we are seeing quite a few cars at Loop 410 and Jackson Keller. That you can expect a little warm temperatures, I guess, 79 degrees, but it's going to get to the triple digits again. However, we're going to be checking in with Mike to see when we're going to lose a few of those degrees later in the week. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 441. Ralph Jarl, the Kansas City teenager who was shot after mistakenly going to the wrong home to pick up his brothers, is speaking this morning exclusively with ABC News. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. Tell me what happened when you go to that address. Just over two months ago, then 16-year-old Ralph Jarl was just being a dutiful older brother, picking up his twin siblings from a friend's house in Kansas City, only he went to the wrong address, and when he rang the doorbell, the man on the other side of that door, 84-year-old Andrew Lester, shot him. Jarl survived, but has a long road of recovery ahead, and this morning, for the first time, he's telling his story to Robin Roberts. What do you want people to know about you, Ralph? I'm just a kid, I'm not larger than life because this happened to me. I'm just going to keep doing all the stuff that makes me happy and 
just living my life the best I can and not let this bother me. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more of Robin Roberts' exclusive interview with Ralph Yarl. For your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. 442, 79 degrees. And if you're looking for something cool for your kids to do this summer, coming up next, we're going to tell you about a special summer dance program. And here's something if you're looking for something cool for your kid to do this summer. There is a summer dance program at the Carver Community Cultural Center and it's called the Carver Summer Dance Intensive. So professional dancers work with the students and students in that program learn different dances including ballet, jazz, modern dance and West African dance. So I'm a competitive dancer and I haven't really been able to like do styles like African dance and things like that. So coming here like I got to learn about it and like do it and it was just like a really cool experience. Now if you want to enroll the two week program starts on July 10th. It is for students ages 10 to 18 years old so you can learn more about this program on our website at kset.com. Mortgage rates continue to hover around 7%, double what they were a couple of years ago. It's making it tough for a lot of people to get a loan. However, 12 on your side's Marilyn Ward says there are some things you can do because being told no doesn't always mean all is lost. Owning your own home is the American dream, but getting your foot in the door, actually buying that first home, can be tricky, especially for certain communities. Listen to this. Black and Hispanic customers actually get denied home loans almost twice as much as white customers. If your loan application gets denied, there are things you can do to help save it, but you have to act fast. If you want to save your loan, you'll have just a day or two between the time in which the loan officer breaks the bad news to you and the bank issues a formal letter of denial. Start by asking why. By law, you're entitled to an explanation. If it's because some information was missing, get it ASAP. By providing a letter explaining any Anything that the lender may not be clear about, such as why there's a gap in your employment, along with supporting documentation, could salvage your loan application. If you hit dead ends, shopping around for a new mortgage might be your best bet, but do it quickly because every time your credit score is hard checked, it can ding your score. You have 14 days to find a new mortgage to avoid further dinging your credit score. If you're looking for a new loan, here's something that can help. Find a lender that participates in what's called a special purpose credit program. This program allows the lender to specifically assist disabled advantaged borrowers of color, women, people with disabilities, and other underserved groups. You can find a bank offering this program by going to the National Fair Housing Alliance website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guy. Things appear to be moving there at Loop 410 at Jackson Keller, and we didn't see any problems there on the roadways, at least not at 448 this morning. Yeah, southbound 35 at Brooklyn is still closed, and I'm showing construction 35 topper wine, southbound lanes, but it doesn't appear to be a big deal right now. Yeah, they, they must do. be doing some sort of repair on that southbound. Gotta be. Brooklyn. I mean, it's been an ongoing thing. Almost and a couple of weeks. Yeah, and since the drain pipe, I guess, is built into it, mm -hmm. probably, you know, Pretty tough to do. Go out there and check it out, Mike. I, I will. I will. I mean, <laughs> In the break. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, could you give me an update, please? So anyway, uh, hi. Oh my goodness. I mean, just the AC is not getting a break. Hopefully, we get a little bit of a break in that by later in the weekend and kind of as the week rolls on. But I don't know why. I, I just quite. First of all, I love this picture. Beautiful. But why are you not in the pool? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It was time for bed. I would sleep in the pool, I think, anyway. <laughs> uh, great picture there. Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect shot. And we got a lot of uh, clear skies out there. Looks like we're having a little trouble with this camera. It's kind of, well, looking okay. Uh, we'll see some morning clouds developing like we did yesterday. We had some clear skies starting off. Yesterday, of course, we did hit 104, 112 in Uvalde. And pretty much same thing around here today is going to be 103, 104 all around the area. And yeah, it's just going to be brutally hot out there 78 degrees uh, this morning so we will hold fairly steady for the next couple of hours again some of those morning clouds out there and then we're going to work our way up through the 80s and all the way up to 92 at noon and we will actually top out at 104 again today heat index about 107 108 so yes that does put us in the the heat advisory and some of the excessive heat warnings out there as well nothing is showing up on the uh, satellite picture as of right now
now. And once again, like I showed right off the top of the show, now this is satellite, not the water vapor imagery, but you can still kind of make out this clockwise rotation, this huge circle sitting right on top of us and pretty much the center of it. Think of this as a giant wheel and the hub is right there right smack dab on top. Last week it was just off to the south and west and that's why we had that northwesterly flow. Some of these little isolated showers, thunderstorms, that's what we were getting last week. Obviously now with this thing sitting on top, it is this lid right there. It is a dome on top of us and that's why nothing as far as rain and also it just kind of pushes down in the atmosphere. That's what heats things up. What will be happening though is that's going to slowly edge its way on out of here and we'll see the subtle changes come about. So there's the high plunk down right on top of us right now. As we go on in through the week, it pretty much stays in place. I mean, sort of a degree lower tomorrow each and every day the rest of the week. Then we go into the weekend and the latter part of the weekend and that high really starts to work its way off to the east. So it, it kind of loosens its grip on us and we don't have that pushing right down on top of things. Also, as it moves on off to the east a little bit more, that's at least going to open up the door for the chance for a couple of showers to pop up. You could see something, you know, just little ones here and there. No big storm systems moving on in here, but again, the opportunity will then exist for any of those little disturbances to move on in. A couple of sea breeze showers, things like that. So at least there is some hope. 104 today. 102 tomorrow. By the way, the record today is 105, so it's going to be a real close call. Uh, we drop down a degree or two each and every day, rest of the week, and then, well, lo and behold, 99 on Sunday, 99 on Monday. We're so happy to see 99. I love here. it. That's what you were hiding earlier. But when you think about it, five degrees lower, that makes a world of difference Absolutely between today does. and then next week. Yeah. Helps out with electric bills and AC oh, yes. and everything. So. Yes. We, we approve. Yeah. Thank mm. you, Mike. Finally. <laughs> Finally. 452, 79 degrees. Up next, something's happening with country music that hasn't happened in over four decades. Plus, Harrison Ford talks about his four years playing Indiana Jones. As we go to break, here are all your lottery numbers. Pick three, 379, Fireball 9. Daily four numbers, 6832, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 4, 5, 15, 23, 35. Your Texas two step, five, eight, 16, 31. Bonus ball 11. Your Powerball number is six, 28, 39, 43, 54. Powerball 12, power play four. Good luck. Harrison Ford talks about playing Indiana Jones one last time. Plus, it's great time for country music on the Billboard charts. For Liz, what's happening in Hollywood? Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Well, I've been looking for this. Oh, my life. As Indiana Jones swings into theaters once again this weekend, star Harrison Ford and cast and crew celebrated the fifth and final movie at the UK premiere Monday night. Ford saying it's a great way to wrap things up. It makes the whole uh, five movies kind of feel the right length, uh, package. We, we know him from the beginning, you know, when he was about 40 years old, and we know him when he's 80 years old. Cool. The first Indiana Jones movie debuted in 1981. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is in theaters for sneak previews Thursday night. Angela Bassett getting an honorary Oscar. The honor announced Monday by the Academy comes after her nomination this year for Best Supporting Actress for Black Panther 2. Mel Brooks also getting an honorary Oscar along with E.T. editor Carol Littleton. First time in 42 years this has happened. Country songs at number one and number two on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. Luke Combs' fast car cover rises to number two while Morgan Wallen's Last Night is on top for 12th week. And reality star Khloe Kardashian is 39 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens at ABC News, Los Angeles. 456, 79 degrees. More possible trouble for former President Trump. Up next, we're going to hear an audio recording of former president appearing to acknowledge that he held on to a sensitive military document after leaving office. Three SAPD officers charged with a murder. Up next, what a San Antonio City Council member is saying about the case, along with the president of the San Antonio Police Officers Association. And a quick check of the roads with Transguy looking over again there at Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. Things appear to be okay there, just construction in some spots, but we're going to be checking in soon with our Stephen Cavazos, who's in the studio. We'll be right back. Live from Chase at 12. 
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Shots ring out on San Antonio's south side overnight. Up next, how a teenager was able to escape two suspects. And more trouble for former President Trump. Just ahead, how the former president is defending a claim that he held onto a sensitive military document after leaving office. Outside with live cam this morning, only down to about 80 degrees out there after another scorcher to start the work week. Tuesday, shaping up more of the same. But Mike has a little bit of hope for all of us, perhaps, as we jump into next week. More to come on that. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, the 27th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yes, we are hopeful. Um, it'll be nice not to see at least the triple digit on the, the full week forecast. Exactly. And we're going to uh, we're going to describe success in, in a matter of degrees, right? Mike goes through. Yes, the, the rest of the week. <laughs> let's jump past today. First of all, we'll drop down, you know, a degree or so each day. It's still going to be very, very hot. I mean, and today is going to be blistering just like yesterday. 79 right now. Bottom number has come back up to 74 now. Late in the afternoon yesterday, that was dropping down into roughly the mid 60s, mid and even some lower 60s. So at least we get that little bit of a break in the humidity in the afternoons, kind of go through the usual um, daily 24 hour cycle. 104 again today. The record is 105. So close to that. The aquifer, boy, it's been taking big hits, obviously, because we haven't had anything as far as rain, it seems like, in forever. Down six tenths of a foot. And the allergens, mold, and pigweed are both on the low side. So so of course, we do have somewhat of a heat index to deal with right now. Feels like 82 out there at the airport. 79 divine 87 is the heat index right now up there in Canyon Lake. We've got mostly clear skies right now, and then we'll see a couple of clouds this morning, and then they'll get on out of here and plenty of sunshine throughout the day. We do have heat advisories, excessive heat warnings. There's this little band right here once again from Frio, Atascosa, Carnes County off to the uh, east, and then there's missing. It's not colored in there in parts of the hill country just because you don't have a heat advisory obviously doesn't mean it's not going to be really really hot out there so everybody's just got to take it easy obviously throughout the day and also it's a yellow day for cps energy if you want more information about how to conserve you can uh, click on that qr code scan that qr code partly cloudy skies warm and humid this morning and then 104 again today like i said mostly sunny skies now we go into the rest of the week down a degree each day so not a huge change, but just small little steps. Then we get into late in the weekend and next week. We're going to start to see a pattern change. This high that's been just plunked down right on top of us is going to start to slowly work its way on out of here. So that, as it's not pressing down, means even lower temperatures will just be in the upper 90s starting off next week. And maybe some rain. At least it's going to open up the door for the opportunities for some rain. Talk more about that. Closer look at the first of yeah, first of July already on uh, Saturday. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. What's going on? Hey, not a lot over here, Mike. Thankfully, our morning commute has been off to a pretty good start. Let's get a look there at 410 and McCullough. If you're heading out in the east or westbound lanes, should it be a bad commute for you? Just a few uh, drivers out there this early in the morning, hopefully taking it easy out on the roadways. Uh, big problem, or I should say the big topic of the morning has been a lot of the overnight construction, which should be wrapping up. Mark mentioned it a little bit earlier. 35 at Topper Wine. Looks like we're in the finishing stages of that, but we are still seeing a closure here, guys. 35 southbound. Gosh, upper level still remains closed at the exit to Brooklyn Avenue. This is an area we've had our eyes on since June 18th, following a fire that shut down a portion of 35, and it does look like we're still seeing that closure there at Brooklyn Avenue, according to TxDOT. I'm going to reach back out to them via email, find out exactly when we'll see that reopen, but right now it doesn't seem to be impacting anyone's drive time. Wide look the map shows right now the main story will be construction and in just the last few moments looks like a crash may have popped up somewhere near I-10. We'll get a closer look at that in just a moment, but let's take a look at travel times. 33 minutes along I-10 westbound if you're heading in from Seguin, 33 along 87 northbound traveling in from Lavernia, and it's a 29 minute drive time if you're heading in from Floresville. One last look here at 410 McCullough though. Things are off to a good start, but we'll find out what's going on with that crash and be on the lookout for that closure along 35 southbound at Brooklyn. We'll have more updates coming up in the next few minutes guys this morning san antonio police looking for two people that shot a teenager late last night it happened just after 11 p.m in the 700 block of mizuno way on the city's south side near mitchell lake police say a 16 year old teen was taken to the hospital with a gunshot wound to the hip sapd says the teen told officers he was able to get away and drive home after he was shot at a tj maxx warehouse Investigators are now trying to pinpoint the crime scene and find the suspects involved.
The fallout continues after three San Antonio police officers are charged with murder. 46-year-old Melissa Perez died Friday morning at an apartment complex on Old Pearsall Road. Now, body camera video released on Friday shows the moments leading to Perez's death. Police were called out after she allegedly cut the wires to a fire alarm system. Now, an affidavit stated that one officer saw Pettis pick up a hammer and break a window. You can see officers open fire moments later. Chief William McManus says Pettis was suffering from a mental health crisis. Now, the officers charged in her murder, Alfred Flores, Nathaniel Villalobos, and Eliezer Alejandro are all out on bond. The San Antonio Police Department is reporting that the officers are temporarily suspended without pay, but they are going through termination process. District 7 Councilwoman Marina Alarete Gavito, one of the newest members of the city council, commented about that shooting. I think it also highlights that we as a community need to do more to address mental health crisis in, in our city and really lead there. Um, we're a compassionate city and we need to make sure that we're responding to mental health crises. We can assess the situation and learn from it because we all know we would never want this to happen again. In a statement, President of the San Antonio Police Officers Association, Danny Diaz, expressed the union's condolences and says the chief followed all necessary protocols. In other news, it's been nearly a month since a man was shot and killed at North Star Mall here in San Antonio, and so far police have not made an arrest. One employee tells KSAT it's affecting his business. Sunday, June 4, shots rang out at North Star Mall, sending shoppers into a panic. According to San Antonio police, the incident that killed 33-year-old Adam Glass was a, quote, targeted and isolated incident. But it still has some shoppers nervous about going back. Stacy Coburn says customers' concerns are cutting into his barbershop's bottom line. Just empty always for me because times I would walk through and like, wow. It was, it was like a ghost town. Again, not just the barbershop itself, but just the mall, you see the difference. Now, Coburn tells us his barbershop is often confused for the one where the shooting actually happened, that getting loyal clients back in his chair has been a challenge. North Star Mall Management says it has a robust security system in place. Well, now to the audio recording of former President Trump discussing confidential documents. We have known that the recording is a critical piece of evidence in the federal indictment against him. But this morning, as ABC's Morgan Norwood reports, we are hearing it for the first time. This morning, ABC News has attained the audio recording of former President Trump appearing to show off secret documents he did not declassify. I just found, isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know, mm -hmm. except it is like highly confidential yeah. <laughs> secret. The conversation with aides and two people working on an autobiography of former Trump chief of staff Mark Meadows took place in 2021 at Trump's New Jersey Golf Club. The contents of the recording have previously been reported and are quoted in the Justice Department's indictment related to Trump's handling of classified documents after leaving office. But the recording itself has never before been heard publicly. Trump is heard railing against his former Joint Chiefs Chairman, General Mark Milley, while shuffling papers. And he references a document about attacking Iran and what Trump says Milley compiled. He said that I wanted to attack Iran. Isn't it amazing? I have a big pile of papers. This thing just came up. Look, this was him. They presented me this. This is off the record, but they presented me this. This was him. This was the Defense Department and him. The recording appears to undercut Trump's claim that he had declassified the documents before leaving office. Trump has pleaded not guilty to 37 federal charges, including conspiracy and obstruction. Prosecutors accuse him of illegally keeping classified documents at his Mar-a-Lago resort. After news broke that prosecutors were in possession of the recording, Trump claimed to Fox News that he was not referring to an actual document. I didn't have a document per se. There was nothing to declassify. These were newspaper stories, magazine stories, and articles. Just Trump says he had personal items mixed in with the documents, which is why he says he did not comply with a subpoena to return them. Reacting to the audio recording last night, Trump's campaign said Said the audio tape provides context proving once again that President Trump did nothing wrong at all. The president is speaking rhetorically. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. 
Just about 10 minutes past the hour, 78 degrees. Amazon is trying to make its delivery service more efficient. Up next, how it plans to use small businesses to help deliver packages. Right now, about 3 million Texas households don't have broadband internet access. Up next, when that's expected to change, change thanks to new funding for Texas. And looking out there with live cam, expecting another hot day into the triple digits. However, we're looking forward to eh, just a little bit of relief, a degree or two. Towards the end of the week, we're going to check in with Mike later in the newscast. Texas is getting billions in federal funding to help expand broadband internet availability statewide. The Biden administration announced the Lone Star State is getting $3.3 billion, and that is the most of any state in the country as part of the president's 2021 bipartisan infrastructure plan. In total, $42 billion is being spread among all 50 states to give millions of people and small businesses access to Internet. As it stands now, 2.8 million Texas households do not have broadband access. There's another law going on the books this year that could make a deadly drunk driving crash a lot more expensive. Starting September 1st, drunk drivers convicted of manslaughter will have to pay child support if parents or underage children were killed in the crash. Governor Abbott signed the House Bill 393 into law this month. Under the law, the driver will pay restitution until the child turns 18 or graduates from high school. If the driver goes to prison, they have to start paying child support by one year after they are out of jail. And time now is 514 and 78 degrees for now. Meta launches a new VR game subscription service for MetaQuest. Up next, how much it costs and what you get for the price. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guy looking over at Highway 90 at Nogalitos. We have one vehicle off the side of the road with the hazard lights on. We're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos to see what's going on. We'll be right back. A heart attack? Do they have life insurance? No. But we have life insurance. John. I'm trying to find something we can afford. Fortunately, in only a few minutes, SelectQuote found John a $500,000 policy for only $29 a month. And his wife, Anne, a $500,000 policy for only $21 a month. Go to SelectQuote.com now and get the insurance your family needs at a price you can afford. SelectQuote. We shop. You save. When you really need to sleep, you reach for the really good stuff. z Ultra helps you sleep better and longer when you need it most. It's non-habit forming and powered by the makers of NyQuil. z Ultra. When you really, really need to sleep. Try killing bugs the worry freeway. Ha, not the other way. Zevo traps use light to attract and trap flying insects with no odor and no mess. They work continuously, so you don't have to. Zevo, people friendly, bug deadly. In today's Tech Bites, a major internet investment. President Biden has announced a $42 billion initiative to put high-speed internet in every U.S. household by 2030. According to the White House, more than 8 million households and businesses do not have broadband. Amazon is looking to partner with thousands of small businesses this year to establish its hub delivery system. The program will pay those businesses to deliver an average of 30 packages per day to customers. Recruitment is already underway in 23 states. Small businesses can apply to become an Amazon Hub partner online. Finally, Meta has launched a new virtual reality game subscription service. Meta Quest Plus gives players access to the system's top two titles every month. It's about $8 per month or about $60 for a year. I guess it really redefines pay per view and pay per play. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. 518 on your Tuesday morning. What's up, Stephen? Uh, thankfully, not a lot in my department. You know, we've had a pretty cool morning, but uh, it does look like we have a stall vehicle that was just reported along US 90. So be on the lookout. Check your vehicles before you hit the roads. Uh, still haven't found out which direction this is listed, but you can see it's off on the shoulder lane, not impacting the majority of traffic there on the main lanes. But still, pretty dark right now. So anytime you see those hazard lights or flashing lights, you know what to do, folks. Move over or slow down. Now, we take you to our map, and really the one thing we've seen a lot of is construction. You see a lot of it always scattered in and around the Alamo City. But uh, I have to talk about what's happening here along State Highway 151 over on the west side of San Antonio. The work hasn't started yet, but just be prepared. This utility work will begin Wednesday. It is overnight, 9 in the evening, all the way up until 5 in the morning. In the meantime, we will see a full closure of the northbound main lanes at Petranco Road. But there is a full list of closures on our website. Scan this QR code, takes you directly there. We have a full list of all the closures that are happening throughout the month of June. 
and also into the early days of July. And I keep thinking, Mike, about those TxDOT crews that are out there improving the roadways in this heat. It is not an easy job. No, I mean, even like I said, doing yard work, getting past 10, 11 o'clock in the morning or the weekends, it's just brutal out there. So if you're outside, obviously plenty of water. Beautiful, beautiful picture. I have no clue what those flowers are except gorgeous. I know our viewers, somebody's going to be writing in. Um, any guesses, anybody? Um, <laughs> no, they look beautiful. A white flower. Hibiscus? I don't know. Is that hibiscus? I don't know. I, you asked, you asked for guess. That's All my right. best guess. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm sure somebody out there is going to be writing in, so uh, that will help solve the mystery for us. We do have mostly clear skies right now. You can see the uh, the skyline down there. This is the 410 I-10 camera, and we'll see if a couple of clouds hanging around here this morning then developing. 79 in town, 75 New Braunfels, 80 Canyon Lake is the hot spot in the metropolitan area. Dew points, you know, mid-70s, so it's pretty humid out there. They will be dropping down somewhat later on today. Now, right now we do have a heat index of 85 at Canyon Lake 82 out there at the airport. So we've got the high humidity this morning and then by later on today, I think this is a little over anxious by getting us into the upper 50s. Later on, we were we stayed about 64, 65 for dew point yesterday afternoon. Still humid, but obviously it drops down. That's why we had those heat index readings. So like I said, I think this is too uh, little too dry here with this one computer model, but at least you get the idea that we go through that that cycle. Humidity comes back up again tomorrow morning, drops back down in the afternoon. So here's what's going on this morning. Like I said, a few clouds will be developing and temperatures. We may drop another degree or two here or there. 92 already at noon. And yes, we will have heat index readings in the 105 110 range. Obviously not like what we had last week when the humidity stayed so brutally high in the afternoons. 104 high temperature. The record is 105 on this date, so obviously it's going to be a really close call. Water vapor imagery and boy, pin the center, the tail on the center of that high pressure area, which is right smack on top of us. And so all of a sudden it's like a weight on the atmosphere, if you will. It just pushes down. That helps to compress it and heat it up. And that's the lid on top of things. And so you're not going to get any rain in this situation, but this is going to start to drift to the east a little bit more. So that'll kind of open things up, at least give us the opportunity for a pop up shower, a sea breeze shower or something like that as we go into Sunday, maybe more like uh, going into the first part of next week. Not that there's anything on the books right now as far as rain chances, but the opportunity, the door is going to be open there. So we'll be at 104 today. Records 105, like I said, we'll drop down a degree or so the rest of the week. Then no triple digits Sunday and Monday. We start off July on Saturday at 100, but uh, then we'll just be in the upper 90s. So instead of Gosh, 10 degrees above normal will be four degrees above normal. If you round up later, we won't be upset. We we understand the reality of things. <laughs> you mean the 99, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to 99. All I think right. okay, we get, we get that, that little shift. Now, we may see a little extra humidity around here, but at Wait. least the then the opportunity will open up for a rain chance. I tell you what, if you look up the word grateful in the dictionary, there's a picture of us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 523, 78 degrees. And coming up next, the documentary arrives on National PTSD Awareness Day. A look at Harry Cavell's latest season of The Witcher and a pentatonic singer go solo. 526, a new documentary looks at a group of veterans battling against PTSD. CNN's Rick Damagella has that story and more in today's Hollywood Minute. When you think of PTSD, you think of that guy that snaps and shoots his wife in the face. And that is not how it presents most of the time. It looks like depression. It looks like isolation. It looks like anxiety. But really, it's all of those things wrapped up. Post-traumatic stress disorder can come from any trauma, whether combat, an assault, or a severe natural disaster. The award-winning documentary Here Is Better focuses on four veterans from different backgrounds, all working to overcome the devastating effects of PTSD. The film debuts on VOD platforms today, which is National PTSD Awareness Day. Neutrality will set me up and keeping you alive. The first part of Henry Cavill's final season of The Witcher arrives on Netflix Thursday, with the second volume of The Witcher Season 3 slated to stream July 27th. Like 
That's Pentatonix member Scott Hoying performing Parallel, the title track from his forthcoming solo EP releasing July 28th. Hoying directed the video on location in Iceland, which co-stars his fiancée. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 527, 78 degrees. And are you ready for some more heat? Well, we're looking ahead at how it's affecting your July 4th holiday plans, plus which parts of the country could soon see blackouts because of that heat. You can actually be a Barbie girl in a real Barbie world thanks to this real life <laughs> dream house. We'll show you how you can stay in it for no charge. Important news, if you're looking to add more exercise to your daily routine, you may want to try exercise snacking. Coming up on GMSA, what you need to know about the trend and how you can get started. As the heat continues here in Texas, the number of people suffering from overheating is going up. In the last two weeks, we've seen a dramatic increase in call volume for heat-related emergencies. Up next, how the heat is already affecting power grids and your upcoming July 4th holiday. And looking out there with live cam, pretty calm right now at 78 degrees, but it will warm up again this afternoon. However, I'm looking forward to checking in with Mike because he says there's a tiny bit of relief later in the week. Just a small hint of hope. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday. It is June 27th. Thanks for joining us. I know all of us are ready for even a small Boy, break. Something. Yes, indeed. The light at the end of the tunnel right now would be a little bit bigger than a pin dot, maybe. But, or, you know, a little pin light, but at least there is light at the end of the, uh, I should say at the other end of the furnace, because it's going to be another hot one. We had 104 today, yesterday, we're going to hit that again today. Records 105 on this date, so obviously going to be real close to it, at least. And just comparing this week to last week, at least we do get a drop in the humidity in the afternoon. So the, what it feels like is just not as quite as brutal as what it was earlier last week. 79 right now. The normal low is 74, so we're still five above normal. Dew point right now is at 74 degrees, which means there's a bunch of humidity out there right now, so it's probably going to fog up your glasses. 82 is what it feels like. 85, Canyon Lake. Otherwise, mid to upper 70s around the area. Yeah, heat advisories, excessive heat warnings are in effect for various counties. Uh, even though there's nothing posted for the Hill Country right now, Obviously, it's still going to be very hot out there, so you just want to really take it easy. Of course, mold, pigweed are both on the low side, and throughout the rest of today, we are going to have some morning clouds, then a lot of sunshine, heats up quickly, 92 at noon, and then add about another 12 degrees to that throughout the course of the afternoon, 104. With the humidity, even though it drops down somewhat, we're still going to see those heat index readings about 107, 108. We do have that little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. We'll talk about that. First couple of days of July this weekend. First weekend of July already. Yeah, details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steven, still got problems out there? Uh, not really a whole lot out here, Mike. In fact, uh, just been watching the commute here on these TransGuide cameras, and it does look like maybe a few more folks are out there this early in the morning. But check out 35 North at Loop 410. Even there at New Braunfels, it is a pretty busy spot. So just watch out in the north and southbound lanes. The commute is get off to a pretty busy start in some of these TransGuide cameras. But we are seeing some quiet roads in other areas of town. So really, nothing's going to slow you down just yet. But it does look like a crash may have popped up somewhere in Leon Valley off of State Highway 151. Not impacted the main lanes, but we'll get a closer look and find out exactly what you can expect for your morning drive. Let's get you to some travel times here if you are heading into the Alamo City. 37 northbound should be about a 29 minute commute at this hour. And if you're along US 90 eastbound, expect about 30 minutes to the downtown area. And the arrival from Lytle along I-35 northbound should be within about 17 minutes. So again, our morning is pretty quiet, but getting busier minute by minute. We know morning rush is expected to be one of the busier ones here, uh, so we'll keep a close eye on things, have more updates on construction spots, and we'll even take a look at gas prices and we'll find out what's going on here along US 90 at Nogalitos. That stall vehicle still out there. We'll have those updates coming up a little bit later on, guys. Thank you, Stephen. A honking car horn outside a west side home gives way to a blast from a gun. San Antonio police say it left a man in the hospital with a gunshot wound. Our Katrina Weber is live near downtown with that story. Katrina, so was he shot during an argument? Well, police don't seem to know. They say they have very little information, and some of that is conflicting. Now, what they do know is that they found the man at a home on Brady Boulevard that's just off Highway 90 uh, near Couples Road. They got the report about the shooting a little after 4 this morning. Police say the man was wounded in his arm. 
They say he told them he heard a car horn honking outside his home, and when he went to check on that, someone shot him. But he says he didn't realize he was shot until later. Well, the man was taken to a hospital by ambulance. Police say his wound was not life-threatening. Investigators are still trying to sort through some of those inconsistencies. They say the man told them that he was standing right outside his home when he was shot, but they say someone else inside the home says he was all the way down at the curb near the car. Police have not released a description of that car or the person inside. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The extreme heat surrounding parts of the southern U.S. is spreading. The heat wave has already claimed at least two lives here in Texas, and forecasters say some areas could set heat records. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, these blazing temps could stick around for the July 4th holiday. The heat wave that's been hovering over Texas isn't showing signs of cooling off. The Weather Prediction Center says areas outside the south and south central parts of the Lone Star State will have the, quote, most significant heat of the season thus far. In the last two weeks, we've seen a dramatic increase in call volume for heat-related emergencies. Roughly 45 million people from Arizona to Alabama are under excessive heat warnings or advisories for Tuesday. And cities across the southern U.S. are forecast to see triple-digit temps this week. Prehydrate before I come out and then hydrate as soon as I get back in. Officials and volunteers are doing what they can to help keep residents as safe as possible. We give out 7,000 bottles of water a day, and maybe that's hard for people to calculate at first, but that's about 6,500 gallons of water in a week. The heat wave is also causing havoc with some power grids. The North American Energy Reliability Corporation says much of the U.S. west of the Mississippi River could see blackouts as a result of surges in demand. More than 90 afternoon high temperature records could be set from Texas to the Mississippi Valley and parts of Florida over the next six days. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Former President Donald Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis are set to hold dueling campaign events in New Hampshire today. DeSantis appearing at a town hall event in Hollis, while Trump is scheduled to speak at a lunch in Concord hosted by a Republican women's club. DeSantis's campaign angered some members of the New Hampshire Federation of Republican Women by scheduling a town hall around the same time as their Trump event. The group complained that the DeSantis campaign is event rather is an attempt to steal focus from its own event. Air traffic controllers are warning they don't have enough workers to meet the increasing demand of air traffic. The National Air Traffic Controllers Association says there are 1,200 fewer certified controllers than 10 years ago. The union is calling on Congress to require the Federal Aviation Administration to hire more. The Department of Transportation agrees. Congress is currently determining a new budget for the FAA. The agency is asking for 1,800 new controllers next year. Recall alert. You may want to check your freezer for more frozen organic pineapple. Scenic Fruit Company says its organic, organic rather tropical fruit blend has pineapple uh, with the potential to be contaminated with listeria. The bacteria can cause serious, sometimes fatal infections in young children, elderly people, and those with weakened immune systems. The recall is being initiated due to a similar problem with Sunrise Growers frozen fruit products. The organic tropical fruit smoothie blend was sold at Trader Joe's stores nationwide. It was also sent to health food stores here in Texas. The FDA advises if you find this product, throw it away or return them to the store for a full refund. Again, this one is for the Scenic Fruit Company. Right now, 538, 78 degrees. A new court filing shows prosecutors will seek the death penalty against the suspect in the gruesome University of Idaho murders. Just ahead, what is next for the survivors of the attack? Plus why this could be a record year for firework sales. Maybe a record year for the heat as well on 4th of July, but we will check in with Mike about the coming week. But for this week, it'll be hot maybe until, well, actually all week, but maybe a slight, slight, slight relief in degrees by the end of the week. 542, the University of Idaho murder suspect is scheduled for a court appearance today. By the time it happens, he is likely to know he could be put to death if he's convicted. ABC's Allison Kosick has the details. 
This morning, prosecutors say they will pursue the death penalty for Brian Koberger, the suspect in the gruesome murders of four University of Idaho students last fall. They're saying that his acts were especially heinous, that while committing one murder, he was preparing for another. They're also saying that he's a danger to society and that he has an utter disregard for human life. If they're able to prove just one of these factors, Brian Koberger could be put to death. 28-year-old Koberger, who was a criminology PhD student at nearby Washington State University, is accused of killing Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin at this off-campus home. Gonzalez's family says they're grateful the death penalty is on the table, saying there is no one more deserving than the defendant in this case. We continue to pray for all the victims' families. Meanwhile, Koberger is due in court today for a hearing on several matters. His lawyers are pushing to get the state to hand over more materials from the grand jury indictment. They're also raising questions about the testing done on DNA found at the crime scene. Court documents revealed that a cheek swab taken from Koberger is a statistical match to the DNA found. Koberger's trial is set for October 2nd. As for the death penalty, Idaho has not executed an inmate since 2012, and a new state law takes effect next month, authorizing a firing squad as a method of execution. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. Time now, it's 544 and 78 degrees for now. We'll show you how you can stay in this real life Barbie dream house ahead of the movie debuting in theaters soon. And here at home, checking the Rosa Trans Guide, looking at 281 at San Pedro and now Highway 281 at St. Mary's where things are moving. We're going to get a check back with our Stephen Cavazos later on. And welcome back. It's 547 in your morning consumer headlines. Bitcoin has hit its highest level in about a year. The cryptocurrency rose is nearly at $31,000 a coin. Bitcoin is up by about 87% this year. Its most recent gains come after a wave of interest in crypto from financial giants. Bitcoin remains well below its all-time high of more than $60,000 back in 2021. We are just one week away from celebrating the 4th of July, and we may see more fireworks set off than ever before. The executive director of the American Pyrotechnics Association says her group is expecting record sales of fireworks for both commercial and personal use this year. She expects commercial sales to be nearly $450 million, with overall sales to exceed $2.3 billion. And it's been the dream of thousands of young girls for many decades, living at Barbie's Malibu Dream House. Now the favorite accessory in Barbie's world has come to life. This is a three-story look-alike to Barbie's iconic mansion. And it looks like a set out of Warner Brothers' upcoming Barbie movie. So there's a dance floor a giant pink slide, and a huge swimming pool that features floating letters that spell out Ken. Now fans of the doll can stay in the Dream Mansion, listed on Airbnb for no charge. Wow, booking opens at 10 a.m. on July 17th for two one-night stays for up to two guests on July 21st and July 22nd. The Barbie movie hits theaters on July 21st. So it looks like it's in Malibu. Like right there on the Yeah, coast? well, I mean, it sticks out because of the color. <laughs> Imagine driving along and being like, gosh, which one is it? Oh, 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 yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One. The giant pink one with, the the, with a slide. On. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, looks, it looks fun. Oh, yeah, my goodness. It definitely looks like Barbie's Mansion. Yeah. 549, 78 degrees. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. So if it's Barbie's Mansion, why does it say Ken in the pool? Oh, uh, that's her... I that's her can't. saying hi oh, that's to her, just her friend. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering. Well, I'm not spotting, spotting Barbie's dream car out on the road, but uh, if you're just waking up right now and getting ready to hit the roads, thankfully we are just seeing some smooth traffic there at 37 at Jones Avenue. You can see north and southbound lanes don't look too crowded. It's one of the quieter spots on our transit guide cameras this morning, uh, but really the only issue we've spotted is that closure along 35 southbound at Brooklyn Avenue. Other than that, we have a lot of construction to look forward to this week. And as a quick reminder, along I-10 here in Kent, County. We will continue to see bridge work, folks. It's going to take us up to midweek tomorrow, but again, that work will take place at 9 this morning, wrap at 3 in the afternoon, alternating main lane closures in both directions from State Highway 46 to Johns Road. But as uh, we take one last look at TransGuide, I'm not seeing any issues that have been spotted. A few stall vehicles were reported earlier this morning, along with some overnight construction that has wrapped. But right now, if you're getting ready to hit the roads, uh, maybe at 6 a.m., shouldn't be a bad start. Okay. Not bad. Barbie's friend's name? 
Uh, um, uh, Midge. Very good. <laughs> well, let me Skip, tell you. I thought it was Skipper. I had no, Skipper's her little sister. And the oh, reason I know yeah. this is because I have sisters. Oh, there you go. I was going to say, I, my older sisters had, had Barbies yeah. as well. So <laughs> I was going to say Tipper. That's all I was. That Tipper. Was my closest Tipper. Tipper. Skipper. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, with the, the, the younger one. With and then there's the Teresa. Hair. There's yeah. Teresa? Well, Teresa. there's all, yes, there's all kinds of, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> we'll talk. She came oh. later. Okay. <laughs> I'm learning stuff I never knew before. <laughs> all right, then. More uh, Mattel <laughs> trivia. Mattel <laughs> trivia. Uh, yeah, just a hot summer day. I think even the, uh, the moths are not able to uh, take it. Beautiful, though. Great picture. I love them with those vivid green leaves that thing's sitting on. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. All right, some uh, clouds hanging around here right now. Not many. We'll see a few more develop this morning like yesterday. We had some clear skies in the overnight hours. Morning clouds, then that's going to give way, obviously, to a lot more sunshine. And, of course, uh, get ready for the heat when you step outside. Still feels like 85. Uh, big question is, has your air conditioning turned off overnight. I mean, it just stays so hot even the overnight hours. It's hard to to try and cool the house off and then once it does cool or shut off a little bit in the morning, it just starts right back in there again. 104 yesterday, 110 at uh, spot for 111. So they hit over there in Del Rio, 109 in Laredo, and we're going to be right up there again today. Dryden looks like it's going to be up to 111, 104 here in town and pretty much low hundreds all around the metropolitan area. Maybe a couple of areas uh, staying slightly lower. I think this computer model is kind of pushing things by saying 99 around there, but it is going to be definitely on the hot side. Of course, with the humidity. It'll feel like it's in the about 105, 110 range. So not what we had last week, but still enough humidity out there to give us that bit of a, a heat index. And again, 105 at the airport is the record for today. So it's going to be a real close call. All right, out in the tropics, this is the leftovers of Cindy. That's about it uh, heading in toward Bermuda. No chance of any development. But other than that, a um, couple of waves maybe trying to come off the... Uh, coast of Africa, but that's that's it. As of right now, the Hurricane Center is not flagging anything to uh, develop, at least in the next five days. 104 today, 102 tomorrow. So we'll slowly, you know, drop down a degree or so over the next couple of days. And then by late in the weekend, 99 high temperatures Sunday, Monday. So the big area of high pressure, which is plunked down on top of us, is finally going to start to kind of ease up a little bit and ease off to the east somewhat. So we don't have that lid on top that will at least give the opportunity for a shower or two to, to pop up. The chance will be there and then it will also mean lower temperatures. We'll take it still above normal, but lower. Yeah, a little a little bit better. Yep. Thank you, Mike. Time right now, 553, 78 degrees. So you're winning a lot of numbers. Pick three, three, seven, nine, fireball nine. Daily four, six, eight, three, two, fireball two. Cash five numbers, four, five, 15, 23, 35. Texas two step, five, eight, 16, 31, with a bonus ball of 11. And Powerball six, 28, 39, 43, 54. Powerball 12, power play four. Hey, good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the travel chaos that was compounded by storms yesterday. There's a lot going on at the airports, but we will talk about what you can expect as far as the number of people preparing to travel for the holiday weekend. And then Robin's exclusive interview with Ralph Yarl, the Kansas City teen who was shot when he mistakenly went to the wrong house to pick up his little brothers. He's going to tell his story for the first time. You'll see it all right here on GMA. Ahead the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, Texas is getting billions of dollars from Congress. We'll tell you where it's going and who it could be helping. Plus, you've heard of snacking when it comes to food, but what about exercise snacking? What you need to know about the trend also coming up. And before 6.30, a spicy court battle brewing over Taco Tuesday. The restaurants involved and what both sides are saying. As we go to break, a quick look at Transkype as the sun is slowly coming up on another scorcher here in South Texas. Looking live at I-37 and Jones Avenue. No problems to report in that area. If anything pops up, we'll let you know in a couple of minutes.